what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Therapeutic Edge. It is spectacular having you here. I've got something new that I added to the collection the other day. This is clearly a Todd bag. It is a glimpse. It is one of the alternate variant blade shapes that he was doing back in. Now, based on everything I can find, this is probably 2010 or 11. Um, there's a little bit of guesswork in this review slash, this is just an overview, really. I'm just sharing something that I got and added to the collection. Um, so I reached out to Todd, but I haven't heard back yet. So here's what I think. I think this is a glimpse from 2010 or 11. I mean, it's within that for sure. Uh, this is one of his mid-tech custom knives. Uh, not one of his full fancy customs, but one of the mid-techs out of his shop. That means the blade steel is 90% likely RWL34. It is that lovely G10 with inlaid carbon fiber. Um, it's got a G10 backspacer, full tie clip. Um, it's probably running on IKBS bearings and the liners are titanium. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. Now, recently, I've had the Bodega and the Field Marshal before in the Steelcraft series, and those were okay. They just turned out not to be my favorite, so I sort of moved them along. And that sort of stalled my Todd Begg collection thing. And then a while back, as you guys may well remember, I picked up Well, Where'd you go? Ah, there you are. I picked up couple of older Todd Bag production knives. These are, this one's Riot and this one is Wii, and I have completely fallen in love with these two knives. And so I started hunting for other stuff. Um, you're going to see a little bit more of that as we move through this next couple of weeks. Um, this, of course, is the Sun Tzu version of the Quaken, the full-size Quaken made by Riot. This is the production glimpse made by we, and as you can see, now, so this is a variant blade shape. He was doing both of these at about the same time. But as you can see, the production model and the mid-tech are really, really similar. There are some obvious differences, but we'll, we'll get to that. But the overall shape and style, right, very, very similar, and that's very cool. Um, yeah, so... I think the blade stock on the mid -tech's a little thicker. Um, the liners on the mid -tech are not hidden. Um, backspacer's a little simpler, right? And of course the pivot is much, much simpler. Um, and they did make a, you know, a little bit of changes here and there. One thing they did do on the production version that I sort of wish was true on the mid -tech is look at how much, look at the access to the lock bar here. Right? It's really tall, it's got jumping on it. This one is more traditionally buried inside the knife. But um, I'm not complaining. Again, these have the same inlaid G10, inlaid carbon fiber on G10 scales. This is just a wonderful design. Now, this is not for everyone. I get that. These are going for about 600, 650 bucks if you can find one on the market right now. Uh, in this condition. Um, this handle shape in particular may not be for everyone, but for me, because of where this swell falls in my hand, th this is just ridiculously comfortable for me. And so these have rapidly become sort of my favorite and go-to knives. Uh, Todd has a long and storied career at this point, designing some really fascinating stuff. There are some full custom glimpses, I mean like really full, no machined parts, none of that, glimpses out there that are, you know, eight grand. But this mid-tech stuff is, if you're into this level of things and sort of in the market, is both reasonable and sort of accessible and, and to me, very, very cool. So let's take a look at what you get with the mid-tech glimpse. Uh, you are talking about three and a half inches of cutting on just shy of four inches of, again, we're going to say RWL34. There were a couple of varieties that he was using, but that was the most common. 
uh, sorry, just about four inches of, we're gonna call it RWL 34. The grip area from behind that flipper tab all the way to the back is one, two, three, four and a quarter inches. So lots of room back here. Knife overall from tip to tail. We're coming in just shy of nine inches. So yeah, 8.3. Eight inches overall. Closed length is one, two, three, four, five and a quarter inches. Now the close profile on this is not by modern sort of sleek carry standards. I wouldn't. It doesn't really live up to that because it's got this traditional bag monster flipper on it. But we're looking at over an inch and a half this way. Uh, but still, because of the way this clip is laid out, and it's anything but deep carry. And I'm okay with that with this particular knife. It's got a really nice tie pocket clip. Um, it rides the pocket really well. It does. Um, you know it's there, but it's not It's not bulky. Uh, it's just sort of chunky, and everything is chamfered down beautifully. Let's do some size comparisons against knives you may be a little more familiar with. We're going to kind of line that. And you know, we'll just do the midline. So we'll put that there. What should we use today. Hmm. All right. Well, we'll start, of course, with our old friend, the uh, PM2. And as you can see, the PM2 is a little bit shorter overall and, of course, generally smaller than the Glimpse, which means, of course, Para 3 is going to be even smaller -er. And finally, here's our old friend, the Bug Out, a very common and very well understood everyday carry knife and of course the glimpse just dwarfs it. You really don't put a glimpse in your pocket if you're looking for a subtle carry. I do have one other thing to show you. Uh, you'll see a review on this later. Uh, Women Carry Knives got herself her first Todd bag uh, and she got herself the mini glimpse which we will be doing a review of down the road as well but as you can see it, it is mini in fact. This is another one of the we made production knives. This thing is awesome. So collecting mid techs and customs and stuff isn't isn't really my jam. I have three or four custom knives at this point. I much prefer high-end production stuff generally. Um, but the big stuff is pretty accessible and it's not custom in the way a lot of custom knives are. I have a couple of custom knives that are sort of rough and you accept that, you know? I mean, I don't have two grand to spend on a, you know, eight grand to spend on a full hand custom. So you, you end up kind of collecting the, the passion projects of, of smaller makers and guys that are just getting started. And I love my stuff, but this and its production cousin here feel very similar. Uh, action is a little slower. Um, the production is drop. But other than that, they are really close. And that's good because we makes a monstrously good knife, which means that Todd made a monstrously good knife. I love stuff like I have another really interesting old Todd bag that I picked up at about the same time. You, you want to see it? So apparently at one point or another, he was looking into making what I would consider to be a more affordable version of his glimpse. And so there's a review of this coming. Uh, this is a TNK prototype of the MIG civilian version of the glimpse. But we will get to that later. Okay, let's uh, weigh it out. I mean, it, it weight really isn't part of the equation. You know, I said this is IKBS. I haven't taken it apart, and I don't really want to because of the way this pivot is done. Everything I've read says that there's probably IKBS bearings under here, but I got to tell you, the way this thing feels, it may be on washers. So, lest anyone ever think that I am perfect, I'm going to ask you guys, is this generation of Todd Bag knife on IKBS, loose bearings, or is this on washers? Somebody let me know. I'm curious. And I would love to have that information. As I said, I reached out to Todd about this knife, but he's a busy guy. I'm basically nobody. I don't really expect him to get back to me too soon. So 
why don't you guys let me know if you know. All right, let's weigh it just because it's something we do. By the way, I got this knife and a whole bunch of other knives from a friend of mine named Chris. And uh, it is Corte Chris Cutlery on Instagram. He is a knife bloodhound. I will post a link to his Instagram in the description of this video. If you guys are looking for a particular, particular knife or just really good knives, hit him up. He's a straight shooter, and again, he's just a bloodhound. He can find anything, or almost anything. It's amazing. All right, let's weigh this out. So, or not. Meh. Okay. So 5.8 ounces. I mean, it's a 9-inch knife. So where's the, the production version? 5.5. Five point eight, so it's a little bit heavier than the We Made production version, but I'm guessing it's that these are inset liners, so they're probably a little thinner, whereas these are uh, proud and visible liners. There's an interesting bit of reality to this: the uh, lock side liner is noticeably thicker than the show side liner, and I'm guessing that's so that the titanium didn't give up all of its swing back here at the cut. I love stuff like that about customs. There's always just a little bit of adjustment. I think it's very cool. Let's get out the magic calipers and I'll tell you how much of that I'm assuming RWL34 he's given me. I probably should zero that, that would help. All right, way back here at the thickest, 3.54 millimeters of RWL34, not too bad. The action is really good. So there you have it. This is, and the reason I'm calling it mid-tech is there's a couple of levels. Mid-tech was actually a phrase I think invented by Canon you know, a long time ago. Full custom is everything is handmade, hand ground, hand cut. Mid-tech, to the best of my understanding, is when some of the original like outlaying cuts like blade shape and probably the liner cuts were done either on a mill or some other form of you know, machine cutting. This is still a custom knife, put together likely right here in California at the bag shop in Petaluma, but the parts probably weren't all hand cut. Just wanna be clear on that. If you are into this shape, and some of you will be, you can find both of these, the Glimpse 7.0 production version and the Midtech Glimpse out there in the world, and I gotta tell you, go do that. You will not be disappointed. Anyway, I'm very happy to have very happy to have added one of these to do the collection. I'm very happy to have been able to share it with you guys today. I hope you guys are having a great day. We'll see you next time.